How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justify DDC and I got another new knives and gear video for you guys. Um, there's a couple things that we're going to go over here today so I'm going to try to keep moving through this. Um, again the point of this series is just to kind of give you an overview of some new stuff that I got in, give you guys an idea of what's coming down the pipeline um, in terms of testing and reviews and for you guys to give me feedback of what you actually want to see full reviews on. So if you like what you see here uh, please drop me a comment below tell me which one of these knives you want to see full reviews on. Um, some of these will definitely get full reviews. Some of them I think are just kind of passing by but I wanted to show them to you guys before I moved them along. Um, but anyways, we'll just jump right into this. But before we do that, we, as always, we have to thank our channel sponsor, Auxiliary Manufacturing, Michael Jarvis over there. Very cool guy, custom knife maker. Makes knives such as this Sumi right here. Very cool little blade. I actually have a couple knives from him coming probably later this month, maybe early next month uh, for review. But custom knife maker, won some awards at Blade Show last year. Really nice guy. Been helping the channel out. So thank you to Auxiliary Manufacturing for sponsoring this video and the channel in general. So we'll jump right into here and uh, we're going to move some of this out of the way and just go left to right here. Well, eh, I'm moving them off to the side, so we'll see what order I decide to do them in. But we're going to start off with this. I'm pretty sure every single person that's watching this, if you're at all familiar with knives in any way, knows what this knife is here. This is a Buck 110, just the classic um, brass bolsters, 440C steel, uh, wood covers, uh, backlock that good stuff. Um, the reason I have this, and I don't think I'm going to do a full review on this because everyone and their uncle has one of these knives. Uh, there's so much content out there about it. Um, it's been out for so long now um, that everyone knows about it, but I just didn't have one in my collection. And so when the opportunity came up for me to trade someone for one of these, I was like, you know, why the hell not? Uh, it's it's better to have one of these in my collection and be able to do size comparisons with it because everyone who's ever been into knives has probably had one of these at some point to at least kind of know for scale what these are like. Um, this is the big brother of the 112, which is probably a more ideal size for most people. This is a, this is a big knife. Like again, I wear like medium sized gloves and you see in my hand there, that's quite a large blade to give you a size range here. Um, in terms of actual sharpened blade length, you're right about three and a half, just under three and a half inches. Overall blade length is just under four inches. In terms of your handle length, you have one, two, three, four, almost five, yeah, pretty much like five inches of two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm just dumb. Okay, yeah, you got like five inches of, of handle here. Like even if I choke all the way up here, you got all that sticking out. Um, just a classic, classic knife. Nothing, nothing special about the blade steel. Like I said, it's just, I believe they're still doing these in 440. <clears throat> now they're, Buck is known for using the Boss Heat Treat, which is, uh, very well known, uh, that you're not going to get the most performance out of 440C, but it is very easy to maintain. Uh, when I got this, it had definitely had some use on it. So I was able to strap this back up to a nice, clean working edge in a matter of, two minutes probably um so i actually really appreciate that about a lot of old uh, old school and softer steels is just how easy they are to maintain because as long as you're maintaining your knives every day it's not a really big deal that you don't have edge retention that lasts for years and years and years like everyone seems to want these days no one wants to take care of their knives anymore so anyways yeah just wanted to show you guys that i got that this will definitely be showing up in size comparisons or anything if you really want to hear a whole review on this i will carry it for a while and do a review but there's so many videos out there about this. I don't think anyone actually cares. Um, the next knife then is actually we're going to gonna break this 110 out for size comparison right away because this is a pretty good uh, comparison to this. This is an A.G. Russell knife, which if you guys have been into knives for any amount of time, you've probably heard his name floating around, Custom Knife Maker. Um, but this is one of his import uh, production versions. Um, so up against the 110, the 110 definitely still dwarfs it, but this is a large knife, um, and a heavy knife as well. So I'm going to, right off the bat, before you get any ideas of how this looks on camera, I want you guys to know how heavy this knife is because looking at it in product pictures and stuff like that, I did not think it was going to be as big as it was. So yeah, 4.7 ounces, so almost five ounces. And in terms of your blade length, you're getting like a three inch blade. If you count the Ricasso, you're going down to like three and a half inches. So um, your whole like 
ounce per inch of blade length. I, I don't really subscribe to that, but if that's what you're interested in, this is definitely a heavy knife. Um, but basically what this is, is this is their A.G. Russell's production line where he takes some of his designs, has them produced overseas. This one is made in China, 8CR15 or 8CR15 MOV. I didn't even notice that until right now. Um, so slight upgrade over uh, 8CR13, but um, still a very budget basic steel. And then you have steel liners, steel bolsters, these yellow Delrin handles, which are coming up on camera as this like very obnoxiously bright yellow. Uh, but in daylight and like in person, this does look like that more muted yellow synthetic that you see on case knives and stuff like that. Um, so this looks like very like banana right now, but it's really more muted in person than it comes across on camera. Um, the good things about this, uh, the price, you're getting an AG Russell design like this for like 65 bucks, I think. Um, <clears throat> like I said, steel bolsters, plastic handles, 8CR15. Uh, you have a back lock here, and what's interesting about this back lock this is not like most back locks. Most back locks, if you're familiar with the process, if you ever taken apart, even more modern back locks like a Spyderco Delica or something, you have this like torsion bar inside that keeps pressure on the back spring. This, and let me see if I can pull my flashlight out here and show you this. I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, or if I'm going to be able to get this to focus. But if you look down inside, oh, this is not going to want to focus. This is going to want to keep focusing on the flashlight, isn't it? Right down in here. I don't know if that's going to show up, but this is actually using a coil spring instead of a torsion bar. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting concept. And then if you're seeing me open this as well, um, this blade is thick, thick enough that they actually ground a channel into each side, a deep channel. Uh, one, you could, I guess, use it as like a nail neck, but you can actually one hand open this knife. Um, and it is very easy to open with one hand, left or right. Um, when I got it, it was a little gr uh, gritty. And again, I should have uh, given the shout out at the beginning of the shout out to Stafford's EDC here on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, he's local to me and he picked up this and the smaller version of this. Um, and then uh, wanted to get rid of the, the big one, so I bought it off of him. Um, so when I got it, it was a little gritty. Um, it wasn't the most pleasant to open and close. It had a lot of grit in the pivot. So I was able to clean that out. Um, and now it is very smooth and pleasant to open with either hand. Um, one thing I kind of wish is that it was more of a mid back lock. Now I'm pretty sure for using the kind of like coil spring that they're using in here for the mechanism, um, it would be much harder to do if it was a mid back lock. But the reason I like mid back locks is it makes, especially for something like this, where you're already able to open it with one hand, uh, with a back lock all the way back here, it's not really intuitive and it doesn't like shake down so it's not really intuitive to be able to close with one hand um i kind of wish this was either just two hand open two hand closed or one hand open one hand closed but not one hand open and then two hand close uh i don't really like that like low back lock like the 110 has as well and it's, there's no way to get it uh to, to close on its own so for example here this is my my Delica knockoff Gonzo here with a um, with a mid back lock like this, you can depress that that uh, that lock with one hand, kind of tap the blade closed and close it with one hand. Uh, but you don't get that on something like this. Um, in terms of fit and finish, though, these are really nicely finished. There's no cracking around the pins. The shield is nice and flush. The transitions between the bolsters and the covers are pretty nice. There's not a whole lot of gapping here on the back. There's a little bit on this side. The spring sits flush, sits flush on the open as well. Uh, there's absolutely no blade play in any direction when this is locked open, which is very nice. You don't get that a lot with some traditional lockbacks, but uh, there is a lanyard hole there for you lanyard people. Um, so yeah, this is an, kind of an interesting knife. It, it, to me, feels like very much like Rough Rider knives. It would not surprise me at all if these were made in the same factory as Rough Rider, um, which if you're not familiar, it's just a, like a budget traditional knife brand uh, based out of China. It would not surprise me at all if A.G. Russell was having uh, Rough Rider make these or whoever the OEM for Rough Rider is make these knives, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing because usually Rough Riders are pretty good quality. 
Um, one thing that I don't like, and you find this with a lot of Chinese, uh, like, like very budget Chinese knives, especially in like the traditional world and Rough Riders the same way, is it almost looks like, you see with this swedge here, there's not like a kind of a crisp transition on the clip. So like on something like the Buck 110, there's a very defined transition on that swedge between uh, the primary grind and the swedge. You got that defined line, so you really can see that clip. That's what I like. On a lot of these budget ones, it looks like it was almost like put on a polishing wheel after, and the transition is kind of smoothed over. And to me, that just kind of looks cheap. It's not coming across as much on camera because with the light, you're getting that tonal difference with the light and the dark. Um, but in person, it's really kind of hard to see that transition between the swedge and the flat, or not the flat, but the primary grind there. Um, so I just don't like that look all that much. Uh, I think it just kind of looks cheap. I wish they would not polish these blades afterwards. Um, but I mean, it does come down to a decently thin grind, even though that this blade stock is insanely thick. You're, you're over an eighth inch thick here, uh, which is kind of stupid, but also I get why they had to do it because they had to have a thick enough blade stock that they can mill channels on either side of this blade. So, uh, it is what it is. I'm, I'm probably going to carry it a little bit and I don't know if it's going to stick around, but I might do a review of it because I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. So that's that. You guys are going to have to let me know if you want to see something on that. Uh, changing tune a little bit here to something a little more modern, but still still kind of traditionally patterned. Uh, this is the Pena Knives X-Series uh, Apache. There's the micro Apache. Uh, they have, uh, the Apache is the blade shape, the kind of the pattern of the knife. Uh, they have a full-size one with a bit longer blade, longer handle. Um, I've had one of the X-Series front flippers. I believe it was the, oh, I don't remember which one. I think it was a trapper or of some like a trapper pattern. It was kind of like, a, it looked like a Barlow handle with a clip point blade. I, I don't even remember what exactly they called it, but um, basically these are Enrique Pena's uh, production knives made by Riot in China. Um, depending on how you feel about Riot, you may really be excited about that or not. Uh, I'm kind of sick of seeing literally everything made by Riot, but they do do a nice job on these uh, Pena X-Series knives. Um, I picked this up because it was, someone was selling it stupid cheap. Uh, the guy out of France, actually. Um, and I just kind of liked the, the look of it. And I thought I could uh, kind of carry it in kind of that traditional style, um, but kind of get some modern material. So it did come with a really nice milled titanium clip that you can use. I just don't really like milled clips in general. And for a knife this small, I'd rather just drop it into a slip, which is what I've been doing like that. Just dropping it in there. Um, but the, the front flipper works very well, as all of Pena's front flippers do. The jimping is nice and grippy. You can flip it in either direction. Uh, you're getting titanium bolsters, micarta handles, which some, with some actual, like, decent micarta. It doesn't have a lot of texture on it, which I would have liked to see, but at least the pattern's good. Uh, Riot pretty much always uses the same micarta on all of their stuff. Um, and then I believe there's an M390 blade. Yeah, yeah M390 blade comes down to a, a decently thin edge. Um, come very sharp from the factory, which I'm, I'm assuming this is the factory edge. It doesn't look like it's been sharpened. Uh, decent sharpening choil would rather that not be there in general because with a blade this small, why bother taking that much out? And kind of at that steep angle, that's definitely going to get caught on stuff. But I don't know. It's a it's a cool little knife. Running on bearings, uh, so it's pretty smooth. You can't really drop shut or anything. Not that that matters at all. Um, but uh, it is actually still big enough that you can hold on to it. I was kind of worried about how that front flipping action would be uh, with such a small handle. You kind of get like a three finger grip. You can, if you really squeeze your fingers on there, you can get a four finger, like three and a half grip on there. But I think for most people, this is going to kind of be like a pinch grip box opener kind of thing, which is kind of how I've been using it. I've carried it a couple of times. I don't know if it's going to stick around, but I thought it was neat. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to see more about it, feel free to let me know. But yeah, neat little knife. Going back a little bit to more traditional styling. Uh, did you guys know that Cold Steel made traditional knives? Because I didn't until this last week. Um, I was surfing Amazon looking at some of the budget options they have for uh, kind of traditional knives. Looking at some case stuff, some shred, um, just that kind of thing. And I stumbled across these. Uh, these are, now these are uh, Chinese import cold steels. Um, I was talking to someone on Instagram and apparently they used to have some USA made 
um, stuff that was made by Schrade back in the day. But since the uh, Cold Steel has sold uh, the company, uh, they're doing a lot more import stuff. So these are being imported. Um, these are some kind of jigged bone handle. I don't know if it's faux bone or real bone. Um, these are only like 20, 25 bucks. So I would suspect it's fake. But then also when you look in here, kind of like the imperfections in the bone, like some of the cracking and some of the pattern on it, like that, it leads me to believe this might actually be real bone of some sort, but I don't know. If you guys know, uh, let me know down below. Um, the, uh, there's not a whole lot of gapping on the back spring. It doesn't, there is a little bit, you can kind of feel that transition right there. It doesn't sit completely flush. Um, on the open, it's much more flush. Uh, there's a little bit of a hair of gapping between the back spring and the tang of the blade, but a uh, decently strong spring. I'm not really worried about it closing on me. So you have your clip point blade there and then your spay blade. Both are a little bit thicker than you get with a lot of traditional knives and are also ground a little bit thicker. Um, but they did come with nice sharp edges, nice polish on the blade. I'm assuming these are just like a nickel, uh, nickel silver bolsters, steel bolsters. Uh, very easy to open and close. The spay blade, you actually don't even need to use the nail neck. You can actually just grab the blade and open it. Um, and then this is running 8CR13 MOV. And there you see 8CR13 MOV, China, the giant cold steel branding, billboarding, which is the only thing I don't really like about this so far. It's the stupid branding that cold steel puts on everything. But from this side... Looks like kind of, it just kind of looks like a case knife. I think it looks kind of cool. So they have uh, they have the uh, trapper with the two blades, and then they have a three blade stockman. Uh, each come in a couple different colors. I think this one comes in this kind of like purplish brown jigged bone, um, as well as like an orange smooth bone. Uh, there's a blue uh, smooth bone as well, and then I think the same colors in the stockman pattern as well. But uh, I mean, it's just it's just kind of cool little knife. And if you're looking to get into a traditional and you don't even want to spend as much as a case, like case knives usually run you anywhere from like 40 to 80 bucks for most of the uh, standard models. Uh, these cold steels are running you like anywhere between 20 and 30 bucks, depending on the on the model. So pretty cool little uh, pr cool little knives. Definitely, I don't know if they're going to last a lifetime or anything like a lot of the other brands, but they are neat. And I will be testing it just to see kind of how it holds up. I, I do like how snappy that back spring is, though. It does feel solidly put together, so there's that. But just in case you didn't know, Cold Steel made traditionals. Apparently they do. Now I know, now they do. Oh, uh, let's see. The last thing here, actually the second to last thing, the last knife we're going to be looking at, though. Uh, this is the Great Eastern Cutlery Number no. 6 Pemberton in smooth white bone. Uh, this is a Northfield branded uh, GEC. Uh, this is a tiny little guy. If I put this up here. There you go. You're looking at under two inches of sharp of uh, overall blade length, even pretty much exactly two of overall if you count the uh, Ricasso. Under two inches if you're counting um, the, if you're just looking at sharpened blade length. So this is going to be legal pretty much everywhere if that's something you're interested in. Uh, you're under that two and a half inch for a lot of places and you're under the two inch for the even more strict places. And it's non-locking. Um, so it, don't I'm not a lawyer check your check your laws if you actually care about following them um, but uh, this should be legal pretty much every single place in the world um, this is one of uh, the uh, Northfield branded GECs if I hadn't said that already um, and this is one of their carbon steel ones I think these are all 1095 so this should be developing a nice patina um, I really like the look of that white bone the brass pins brass liners no gapping at all, as per usual. I like, for such a small knife, I do like the uh, the mid-swell on the handle there, um, just because it gives you kind of a little bit of your, something for your fingers to kind of uh, orientate themselves when you're holding it. That sounds stupid, but uh, with such a neutral handle, it's nice to have a little a spot of kind of knowing where your fingers are. And you can get like a three, like a three finger grip on this knife. Like if you're going to do kind of like your pinch grips, you can get, do that very easily. Um, but you can get like a three finger grip on this knife. Again, wouldn't want to be doing a lot of hard work with this, 
but for just kind of a box opener, letter opener, general utility knife, this works very well. And I really have actually enjoyed carrying this so far, even it is, even though it is very tiny. Uh, but the fit and finish is great. The half stop on this is actually really great for such a small little knife. I'll hold this here so you can listen to it. See if I can do the, 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 the thumb thing that a lot of traditional guys like. There you go. But nice little back spray on this knife. I actually really, really like this. So um, and then the last thing here that I'm actually going to keep this here because these go together is I got some new uh, uh, epic leather slips made. One for the GEC and one for my Spyderco roadie that my wife gave me uh, years and years ago back when we were still dating. Um, so this, this has always been a sentimental knife to me. This will literally never leave my collection because it was a gift from my wife uh, back when we were kids. So uh, very sentimental to me. And I finally, I wanted a way to carry this where I wasn't going to lose it as easy. So pocket slip, I put this lanyard on here with the little Urban Carver's bead, but uh, Epic Leather made this custom slip for me. And then a very similar one for my little uh, number six GEC. So again, not a lot to say about these other than the leather quality is super solid as always. Stitching is solid. Um, if you haven't checked out Epic Leather, I'll leave a link in the description for his page. Uh, really nice guy, really responsive, uh, willing to do custom stuff for you, and also has a lot of like ready to ship stuff on his website. But um, that is pretty much it, guys. I will bring this stuff back out here for you to look at as I wrap this video up. Uh, be on the lookout for another kind of like overview new knives and gear video soon following this one. Um, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek here. I got new knives in from bw knives and from crossroad customs uh, but i have enough to say about those that i want to kind of make them their own video especially so this one doesn't go too long but i really appreciate you guys watching if you have any uh thoughts about what uh, i should review next leave them down in the comments and as always i will see you guys in the next video